この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tia Boo. It is Tuesday, and that means that I am here this morning. It's not morning anymore, shit. That I am here this afternoon, goddammit, for Natsume Yujincho, specifically Zoku Natsume Yujincho, or the continuation of Natsume Yujincho, or Natsume Yujincho Season 2, or whatever you want to call it. It's the second season, and there's more of it. Yay! That wasn't a sarcastic yay. That sounded sarcastic. I can hear myself in my headphones right now, and that sounded sarcastic, and it wasn't meant to be. That was a fully sincere yay. I'm actually really excited that there's more of this. And beyond that, I'm really excited to see how things change as this series progresses, as it gets a little bit more, I don't know, backing, maybe? A little bit more confidence in the staff that they're going to get. More work on this project that they can really throw themselves into it, perhaps. One thing that I don't know, and I did do some quick Google searching just to try and figure it out, just in case.、Um, you know, just searching for things like Natsume Yujincho season budget, Natsume Yujincho season two budget, things like that.、Um, and I found a couple of people who were like, it looks like the budget got better, but no real understanding of what was going on in production or whether there was more time for production or anything like that. I assume it was on a pretty tight schedule because this season did air one year after the first season ended.、Um, so, pretty, pretty consistent schedule there. Nothing crazy. But I do wonder whether there's going to be an obvious change in confidence and competence and just willingness to, to go ham on some of the animated bits and other things、um, as we move into the second season. In my experience with longer running shows, especially the ones that are broken up by seasons and don't necessarily. Feel like one continuous story the way that something like One Piece does, where by the time it was starting to get serialized as an anime, we could be pretty certain that this thing was going to be ongoing for a long fucking time because it just continues.、Um, or Naruto or Bleach or whatever.、Um, but Natsume is something that's more break upable into seasons, partly because of the serialized format of the actual like, stories that it tells. So I'm interested. I'm interested to see because, in my experience with such shows, Look at Simple Gear.、Uh, season two is one of the big jumping off points where we go from, yeah, this is the thing. We animated it. It's okay.、Uh, it, it does what it needs to. It's kind of a moving manga. It's got a couple of cool things in it. But really, we, we added a lot through the music and through the voice acting, and we tried to make these characters come to life. And I think we succeeded despite not making a, a piece of art that, in and of itself, is. Truly, like, mind blowing or anything. It's cool and it's good and it expresses the story that we are hired to express, but it doesn't go above and beyond. And then we get to season two and the staff starts going, like, I like this. I've been working on this for a year now and I have, like, a relationship. Me, I have a relationship. Mr. Director, Mr. Scriptwriter, Mr. Series Composition and, and Adaptation Person, Mr. Color Designer and Character Designer. Like, I want to do this character just. Justice. I want to do this story justice. I feel something toward this. And once we hit that point in production, something changes in the nature of a show. And that's not to say that Nuts May doesn't feel like a project with love in it already. It feels like a project with plenty of care in it, but it doesn't have that tipping point. That tipping point into, oh, this is passion. I can see it. And I'm kind of expecting, or at the very least, hoping. That we get to see some of that coming out of Natsume Yujincho. Partly because one of the things that I know and knew about Natsume Yujincho before I ever picked it up or put it on a poll or thought about really watching it was just that. When I browse through Mel and you know, go through on the, the like top 100 animes of all time,、um, you start seeing the, the seasons pop up and they all pop up on that 100 list. They're all there. And if you go through them by rating, you start to see that pretty much every season has like a tenth of a point of, of like increase in score on Mel. Now, of course, there's, there's the like fall away of new people, which leads to that to some extent. That always happens with series.、Um, people who wouldn't have ever liked anything about Natsume Yujincho will watch season one and then give it like a three out of ten and be like, I hate it, and then never watch anymore. And so their ratings don't carry over to later seasons. So it, it narrows the field to the people who actually care about the show, which will inevitably increase the ratings and blah, blah, blah. But it's so consistent. 
over the span of so much time that almost every season goes up from like 8.31 to 8.45, 8.45 to 8.51, 8.51 to 8.6, just climbing up toward that nine point range of God tier shows. And that's cool. That's cool to me because it means that there's ongoing investment in this show and there's the possibility that that investment goes both ways and comes from the artistic and creative side as well and that's awesome okay so i wanted to talk about all of that jazz because i wanted to and then what i want to do is take a step back and try to semi-concisely put into words how i feel about natsume right now um, both as a character and as the the show itself. How do, how do I feel about Natsume and what do I think it is at this point? Having seen one season, it's inevitably going to change as we add more to it. Like any piece of media, when you add to it, it's altered. Um, and the fresher things that come into our mind are going to be interesting um, and change the way that we think about the rest of the show. Unless they're exactly the same story beats as season one, which isn't going to happen, so I'm not worried about that. What do we pull away from Natsume Ujincho season one? Well, that's an interesting question, I think, because while Natsume has these these very obvious surface level lessons that it teaches, it's also got a more pervasive underlying philosophy. And I think that at this point, I will say that I think of Natsume when I'm asked this question or when I posit this question to myself because that's that's what I did this morning um, when I was thinking about how do I want to introduce season two. Well, I want to talk about where we are in Natsume now and what I think about that. Well, I, I think that the core, part of the core of Natsume is a really a really interesting exploration of the human condition through inhuman characters. So what I mean by that is that Natsume is a character who is extremely human. He is like an exposed raw nerve in the middle of this show. He's had to learn a little bit of resilience just to get by because of the way he's been treated and dif been different and been ostracized inevitably because of his differences. Um, but he's kind of an insanely sensitive person, insanely sensitive character, the kind of person whose compassion kills them. Right. And, and I mean that literally like the, the kind of person who is so overwhelmed by their own empathy. And these these are real people who really exist. And they're also really powerful characters, I think. But a, a character who is so overburdened by his own empathy, so overflowing with compassion that it actually is pulling his own soul out of his body constantly. He is. Ah. Uh, I mean, that's Natsume. And then there are the yokai. And the yokai, one after another, teach us that we're all the same. That people, whether they're yokai or not, and we can use that as an analog for any kind of difference or otherization, right? There are levels and layers of otherization in Natsume built into the narrative. Natsume is one level of otherization away from all the normal characters in the show, right? Even even Tanama is another layer beyond that, and and uh, 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 Natori uh, is another layer different, right? Natori is the kind of person who has a deep dark secret that they hide, but like hides it well and has a life despite it. Natsume is the kind of person who's trying to integrate it into their life and doesn't know how and still can't, like, express it to people. You can use these as analogs for all kinds of difference if you want to. I mean, if you if you really want to, you can think of Shuichi Natori analogously as a metaphor. There's no text on this or anything like that. It doesn't, it's not there. But if you want to, and if you can gain something from it, think of Shuichi Natori as a person with, with, like mild questioning sexuality who hardcore is like i'm straight and i'm a public figure and i'm an actor everybody loves me nobody will ever find out about this background about me and then tanama is somebody who's maybe like a little bit queer like isn't really you know doesn't really know what's up can't really feel those feelings natsume is something totally different like you can use these as analogies for anything and then if you want to 
you can take the yokai as characters that are that are even further removed because they are not human as expressed by the story, as told to us by the story. And yet they embody the most human emotions that the story expresses almost. Um, these desires to seek connection, this thing that we're all trying to get by, that we're all trying to feel worthy and worth something to someone and needed and to feel like we're good people or good spirits or whatever. And Natsume embodies all of those traits completely again he's a raw nerve a raw expression of the human condition made flesh and then placed into situations where he has to interact with other people who are themselves different types of expressions of the same condition it's it's painful and there is a painful element to natsume there's i i was thinking about how i would phrase this and i don't know but in the same vein of Natsume's compassion being something that's almost killing him, there's an element to self-harm, uh, an element of self-harm, I should say, to this show. Um, there are a lot of characters so far, just in the first season, that have effectively sacrificed themselves for something, for a memory, or allowed themselves to leave this mortal coil because they've become content. And that's a difficult thing to deal with. There is death in this show. And it's... a uh, uh, a pretty subtle, pretty nuanced take on a particular form of kind of contented death. And beyond that, there's this self-harm aspect of Natsume is continuously, actively, death wish level, throwing himself into danger. Because, he, again, he's so overburdened by this compassion that will kill him from the inside if he doesn't, right? He's got such a strong conscience and moral compass, at least as far as I see it at this point, that if he didn't put himself in harm's way, he would be putting himself in much greater personal internal harm because he would destroy himself if he didn't do the right thing in each of these circumstances. He can't not do it. So what do I want from second season? Well, obviously I want more of the same, but I also want more of more. I want to dig into these bits and pieces that are more than just, oh, funky boy goes and helps spirits and it's fun. Um, I want to dive into Natsume as a character. I want to know what happens when he fails. I want to know how resilient he really is. I kind of want to see him break at some point. Maybe not in this season. Maybe it's a little too early. But I want to know what happens when Natsume shatters. Because his resilience at this point is kind of bullshit. It's kind of, it's kind of inhuman. It's kind of crazy. And I'm kind of waiting for it to, to fall away at some point and then be regained because he is resilient and he can put himself back together. I want to know about that. I want to know who that is, right? Who, who is that person? And I don't know yet, so I'm excited too. I also want to know about all the other characters. I want to know more about Reiko. I want to know more about Madara. I am invested, mostly because of that underlying text, right? There's... There's more here than meets the eye, and that's neat. That's neat. My only hope is that we continue to explore it, that we don't stagnate or get stuck in a rut, telling the same stories over and over, that we do experiment and explore and aren't afraid to break our characters because that's exciting and interesting to watch them change. And let's see. Uh, there was one there was one other thing I was gonna mention, but I can't remember what it was. Mm. Love. I wanna see I wanna see love come from the creative side and I wanna feel it. I wanna know where it's coming from. I think that's enough to talk about here at the beginning. Pretty pretty long intro discussion. Now, there are a couple things otherwise, housekeeping wise, that I should get through. Um, let me just check my download. Okay, it's like eh, it's like halfway done. So I woke up really late this morning. That's not true. I, I woke up really early this morning. I was up at like seven. And then I climbed back into bed because it was cozy, and then I woke up at 1 30 PM. <laughs> Whoops. So, whoops, uh, if you've been waiting for this video, sorry, it'll be up when it's up. I'm getting started late. I do feel good this morning, which is great and really surprising because uh, part of the reason that I ended up sleeping in was because I was reintroduced to an alcoholic beverage of, uh, of Korean fame called Solmec uh, because I found out that, 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 one, Grubhub will now deliver alcohol, and two, there is a Korean barbecue place near me that delivers soju and beer. So I, I went to college, my roommate was Korean, and one of the first things that he introduced me to 
while I was like introducing him to anime and shit was Solmec, which is a traditional Korean drink. Well, not traditional, but a very popular Korean drink of light beer plus soju, which is like 15% alcohol. Any reasonable person should know that if you're mixing 15% alcohol with 5% alcohol, that's a lot of alcohol and you're probably not going to taste it very much. That makes it very dangerous. Don't do it. I did it. It was a bad idea. But I feel I feel great this morning, I think. Uh, so, cool. But I did get a very late start. And one thing I didn't predict and didn't do early, and I, I'm regretting it, is that I didn't go and download Zoku uh, earlier. So I started downloading Zoku Natsume Jincho like an hour ago. And it took that full hour for the first episode to actually download. I'm now downloading the second episode as well. It's like... It's like a third of the way done, so it's got like 45 minutes at least uh, before before it finishes up. But I want to start recording now. Uh, what this means is kind of two things. Well, there's a possibility that we won't watch episode two because we might get to the end of the discussion of episode one and just look and be like, it has 40 minutes left. I can't. Um, it's late. I can't. Also, I might just get drained because I don't know how long this this like, oh, I don't feel hungover at all feeling is going to last. I don't know. And... Also, it's the beginning of a new season. There might be a shitload to talk about. We've we've got a new OP. There could be tons of symbolism in it. We we got all kinds of things that we could notice. So there's a distinct possibility that if the discussion for episode one goes a certain length, that we'll just call it there. And we'll consider the remaining 12 episodes of the show, like, that's where we'll do two episodes per week. Um, if there's a cliffhanger, we'll probably just continue or whatever, but... There's a distinct possibility that we'll only watch one episode. Sorry if you were really looking forward to two. I want to give this season premiere all that it's due. And I also don't want to take a, a like hour break to wait for the second episode to download. Okay? Okay. Sorry, but that's how we're going to do it. It's my fault. I take responsibility. We might just watch one episode today. Okay? Okay. Speaking of which, let's watch this fucking episode. So I've downloaded the CYC version of Natsume Yujincho Season 2. Zoku Natsume Yujincho, you can find it on Nya, it's available, it will download slowly, start downloading it immediately, you, you, you want to do that. Uh, apparently these are the mm, 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 Tlacatl 6 modified subs. I don't know what that means, uh, the CYC version was great the first time, it was good quality and attractive and good. File sizes are quite a bit larger this time, part of the reason that it took a while to download, which makes me think that there's going to be more going on visually, uh, or just a bit more fidelity, which sounds really cool to me. I, I like fidelity. I like pretty visuals. Let's go. Gosh, I'm an idiot. All right, so let's watch it. I've got the first episode of Natsume Yujincho season two, Soku Natsume Yujincho, up and ready to go. It is sitting at zero seconds. There will be two versions of this reaction video. You can find a picture in picture version of this reaction video with the video up there, linked in the description, and a timer based version up on YouTube. If you would like to do a syncy thing and sync up your own copy of this episode with the timer based version, you are welcome to do so. Just get your copy ready because the beep beep timer to count you down will be coming at you now. New OP. Okay. I instantly like this OP more. Who was that? He's traveling? This is a different location? Is that a different location? I didn't realize that was a CG plane. Is that Reiko? All right, so we're using the same sky, similar cut. What's that? What what was that? And then the the loss of connection. Like I I know what it was, but what was it? All right, two different sides of things. A lot of familiar characters, lovely. And we got to wonder about Shuichi and his weird thing that he was doing that was ominous at the end of the last season that we don't know anything about. That was a nice cut. Similar to the Chiai Afuru cut. You know, the Chiai Afu. Hello, track that I remember. Gonna intro the same way. 
similar way. Bonk. Is there a yokai over there? I bet there's a yokai over there. <laughs> Where is it? Is there a yokai sitting next to it somehow? Interesting. Oh, hello. Yes, but not the one you think. Yep. Oh, Jesus. Now that is a significant improvement. Uh, what did you just break? Uh-oh. What were those eyes? Wait. Yeah, those were Nyanko's eyes, but not the right color. Oh my god! No. No. Oh, hi. Okay. What was the rope, though? <laughs> Brilliant. Beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Alright, that was some snappy exposition. We might actually pause. Wait, what did he just do? We're gonna pause after this. Please give me a cut. I know. Give me a cut. <laughs> oh, okay. We're gonna have one of those again. Stolen Book of Friends. So, a yokai is going to succeed at stealing it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see the fam. Uh, background art is all higher fidelity than it used to be. And uh, the textures are better. Oh, hi. Nyangoro. Now we broke up. I'm suspicious. That that thing with the eyes was suspicious. Mm. That's more exposition. Holy shit. <laughs> that's that's deep character motivation exposition stuff that we had to really figure out over time, you know? No, he did not. What's outside the window? Oh, there. Are. <laughs> yeah. It was like this frame. <laughs> But it's... Wait, that's not Nyanko. It's not Nyanko. It's not dirt. It won't wash off. And he's not speaking. This is another one. Maybe a... Like a ditto, like instantly transforms into the nearest thing. Something like that. No, it's not Nyanko, dude. There's a problem. Be scared, be scared, be scared. Oh, fuck. That is a very good question. Of course, but... Well, yeah, but or this is its natural form. Like Madara is taking the lucky cat form because it's convenient. Is it? Because the episode title. <laughs> oh my god, all the colors gone. Wait, 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 wait. I like this track. Shit. 
This isn't some ploy by Madara. No, because he he's waiting. He's willing to wait. See those shadows around Nyanko's mouth? That is also exposition about Natsume's character. <laughs> Why does he want it back? Not power. Okay, so it's not malicious. True, much easier for them to steal it from another mediocre, potentially, yokai than from Natsume and Mada. What? Oh. Yeah, that's a lot. Are they all going to be freed? Is the black cat trying to free them? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hide. <laughs> I gotta mask your scent. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord? The Black Cat, maybe? Hi! You're not the one that we met before, right? Okay. Yes, but no. Those clouds are really nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. What kind of party? Lovely. Yeah, it looks just like me. That's not what I asked. A lovely fat cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, we've done it before. And here we go throwing ourselves into desperate danger for one specific reason that is we have a duty to a duty to protect. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm If. If. Yeah. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yep. All is. Eh? Oh, does she hate cats? <gasps> ah, ha, ha. Oh, hi, little black cat. With a cat. <laughs> oh, all of the throwouts. Wow. Ha ha. Yay. Here, have this weird book. I don't know what the fuck it is, but. Have this. Jesus. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, shut up. You don't know shit. Hey, look, more exposition. Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> Okie dokie. No, you haven't. What? Nah. The Lord. Is Madara the Lord? No. Reiko? Was he turned into that black cat? As a punishment? Of some kind? Is this the Lord or... No. Is it somewhere with a rope? Okay, a protector and savior. Oh, let's not. We might not need to do that. There might be another way. Hmm. Oh, really? I think I know that place. But this is how escalation occurs. So it would be really good if we could find that black cat and fix things now. Ah! Gotta stop him a different way. Oh my god. Wow, that is right on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just a human. Sure is. Chase that motherfucker. <gasps> nope. Hmm. Of course. Uh-huh. So that black cat is the Lord. All he wants is the is the book back. All he wants is his name back, dude. He wanted you to figure it out. To figure it out. To figure out that there is a lord who's been confined. You can? Oh, you got mental powers. Thank you. That's very convenient. Like a lord? Or was it a specific person? Oh, right, because she hates that form. Well, you broke the seal. You broke the seal. Yeah. Yeah. Can we let him out first? Yeah. You got his name? Mm 
reintroduction of the mechanic. Find his name. How do I know what it is? Aradam. <laughs> Shit. Right, row. Yeah, don't, don't. Mm. You're a human. Yeah. Shit. All right, it's going to come down to the wire. You got to pull something, not some A. You got to pull something. You got to just go for it. Shit. That's an interesting play. Ah, desperate hope at the last second. Bingo. Damn. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's it's great. Holy crap. <laughs> Alrighty. Mm -hmm. And it comes around. And the reversal. Rico? No. I wanted to protect. Ah. Solid. Nothing to forgive. That's why I'll stay away. Hmm. Bye, Rio. And snow. Of course. <laughs> yeah, cuter than you. Is she gonna stick around? I hope she sticks around. I, I kind of like her. That would be cool. Oh, okay. Darn. Okay. That's chill. <laughs> Appreciated. Appreciated. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> hmm. 
Those are a part of life. Those are a part of life. Ooh. 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. You know what this ED's gonna do? Oh, no. Uh oh. <laughs> Ooh, who is that? Who is singing? All right, we'll look it up. I will pause. Okay. So that is Corin or Colin, Japanese acoustic band from Kyoto Prefecture, who made this song. Um, the reason that my reaction to this this song at the end, the the ED, was oh no, oh god. Uh, I think you should probably get, but. Like that's a that's an ED with strong emotional content immediately, like strong inherent emotional content, just because of the nature of that woman's voice. Um, and that's a thing because there are particular shows that use their ability to cut to ED for dramatic effect, and this one is one that can be used for that, and it's going to be. I'm just I'm just so certain. That we're gonna get to a point at like episode nine or ten where it's just gonna we're gonna have our hearts absolutely destroyed and then just cut to that ED and it'll be like I want to treasure each and every moment and or no like whatever the the first lyric is what's the first lyric? Hey, yeah, just hey, just a little longer and we're just gonna be like, oh, <laughs> fuck, God, oh no, oh no. Oh no. Okay. Actually, before I do anything else, I did look away during like the middle of the ED, so I'm going to go back through it really quickly and just read through all the lyrics. Just really quickly, there'll be a cut here. Okay, first things first, I like the style of the the ED. It's kind of similar to the same kind of same kind of watercolory style that we had in the first ED, but there's a lot more to it and a lot more animation in it, especially once we switch to this cut where Natsume turns around and begins walking backward. First off, symbolically, all of our characters are walking in the same direction on separate paths. Um, the, kind of the exception of Reiko, who walks in someone else's footsteps, which is very strange. I'm assuming that's Reiko. I'm not positive, but I'm assuming. Um, Sasada over here. I assume that's Tanuma, the two boy bros, Nyanko, and Reiko. I assume that that's Reiko again. And Natsume is the one character who turns and looks back, so reflection is important. And then the camera turns that into a looking forward, right? So so he's walking backward, takes one step where he plants his leg, like one foot is pointing this way, the other one points this way, so he's turning. And then in the midst of that turn, the camera also comes around and circles him to give it a full 180. So that looking backward becomes looking forward, and that's important. Pretty clearly, right? It's also just a gorgeous cut. I mean, look at it. Just, like, look. Look at this rotating shot. It's gorgeous. The little, the little wisps of breath. And really just the wispiness of the whole thing and the broken lines in the, in the, the, the upper lip and the lower lip and, and things like that. It really comes together. I love this style a lot. I like it a lot, a lot. 
uh, to the point where I'm actually curious who did the key animation and storyboards for the ED, because that's the thing that's usually listed on Mal. So let me look really quickly. ANN, Zoku, not so, and I should probably keep this page up because I will probably need it. Uh, Takehiro Omori, uh, Omori, sorry, did the, the ED storyboard. Um, unit director for the ED was also Takehiro Omori. And then for the OP was Ta Tetsuya Takeuchi. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Takehiro Omori also episode directed episode 1 and 13. So that's interesting. Um, and of course he's the, the series director. So he, he put all of this on there for, for realsies. Cool. So he, he also directed the first OP, but he directed that he chose to direct the second ED over the second EP or, or, or over the second OP and let somebody else direct the second OP. That's interesting. Okay, cool. I like this ED. It is, it is, it is a heart crusher though. Let's talk about this episode and things that stood out. Mm, I want to, I want to do this kind of coherently. So I'm going to take a minute to write down and just like gather thoughts. Okay. 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 There are a number of standout things about this episode. I think this is maybe the best episode of Natsume Jincho so far overall, um, in terms of just how it's put together, how it's folded up and how much information is present in this episode. The sheer amount of information that is present in this episode is, is actually probably the most mind-blowing thing to me. Um, and the sheer amount of character information that we get about Natsume specifically, mostly things that we already know if we've watched season one, but the sheer amount of them that, that are packed into this one episode is kind of bullshit. It's kind of bullshit. Because in a full season of anime... <laughs> In a full season of anime, we expressed all of these things about Natsume, these things that are core to his character. And during my time just writing things down, I attempted to write all of these out. Who is Natsume? Natsume is a compassionate individual. He has been ostracized in his past. He feels like he is stuck between worlds and not a part of either of them. He almost has a death wish. He has no hesitation throwing himself into genuinely dangerous scenarios if the end result, he thinks, leads to salvation for even one sentient creature or one yokai um natsume is different from reiko and other yokai who have met reiko express this frequently natsume trusts others even if they haven't given him any reason to trust them he uh falls onto the side of of like the nature of human the human the human condition is that humans are okay they're not like the worst usually people are generally good um uh what's the What's the, the general thing for that? Oh, it's Hobbes and Rousseau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it has to do with politics. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, Hobbes with the nasty brutish in short. Uh, Rousseau, that that uh, corruption of, of, like, systemic inequality leads to bad shit. Not somebody falls very much onto, like, the Rousseau side of things where people people are naturally good. People, I, I, when I, whenever I say people in this show, I include yokai in that. I need that to be clear. Um, the show posits that all sentient entities are essentially the same. That's part of the proposition of the show. Uh, yokai are deserving of good. Like that. That's it. Um, yokai are clearly capable. Okay. On a on a basic on a basic morality level, depending on how you want to do it, depending on whether you want a like deontological perspective or like a more utilitarian perspective or what, um, my personal like my personal position on morality generally follows like a generally utilitarian perspective with some deontological like understanding that there are principles that need to be available and like useful. But the core of it comes down to potential for suffering and potential for pleasure or joy. I think pleasure is a, a maybe maybe a loaded word because we think pleasure and we think like um, hedonistic pleasures, like pl pleasures of the flesh, is what immediately comes to mind, and that's not what I mean. I mean I mean joy or like pleasant experience, goodness, whatever. Um, so there's like there's. 
moral equivalency between the suffering of one individual and the suffering of another is one core concept that needs to be understood. Like, if I am in pain, I should be able to understand that other people can be in pain the same way. I should be able, like, if I hit my thumb with a hammer and it hurts like fuck, I should be able to see somebody else hit their thumb with a hammer and be like, ow, oh god, that would hurt. That's not good. Um, our, our pain is equivalent. And on a, like, a moral ought perspective, there shouldn't be a difference between, like, me getting hit in the finger and you getting hit in the finger in terms of the net amount of pain caused to humans or sentient entities or whatever. Likewise, if if Natsume is able to experience emotional suffering because of ostracization or being left alone or not being seen as worthy or uh, not being useful or any of those things, then he can see yokai who are perfectly capable of all of those emotions as well and feel for them, right? Um, and in the same way, like, there's an equivalency, and for Natsume, like, you can trade one for the other. And Natsume is a character who, when you combine that with the Death Wish, is very much inclined to value, uh, the suffering of others over his own, or the, the, the pleasure of others over his own, right? He's very willing to sacrifice his own positive experiences for positive experiences for others, and he's very willing to experience suffering to delay or negate the suffering that would be experienced by others super super core port part of his character but what i mean is like he he thinks that people are generally good and yokai are people so he trusts them and this is why a lot of his like throw myself headlong into a deadly scenario works out because he puts trust in people and they actually live up to it which is awesome what else is is natsume natsume is a character who is driven by what he feels as duty he feels that the passing down of the book to him is is now a weight a responsibility upon his shoulders and he feels like he is responsible for both the potential pleasure and potential suffering of all of the yokai contained in the book of friends so long as he has any kind of power over them that's like a huge thing weighing on Natsume. Um, Natsume is a protector. Uh, it goes along with the duty thing, but like the nature of his duty is to protect people from suffering. Um, he's he's defensive is essentially what I would consider him as a character. He's not a, an active character. He's a reactive character. Uh, and he also has elements of his history and family that are really fucking rough. He's been thrown out of multiple families, um, mistreated by them, and people don't take his, the real things that are really important to him very seriously at all. These are all elements of Natsume. These are all elements of Natsume as a character that took an entire season of anime to exposit to us and explore and really show us and make us convinced that these are all real, genuine characteristics of him. To list them again, compassionate, been ostracized, stuck between worlds, has a death wish, no hesitation, is different from Reiko, trusts others, uh, driven by duty, is a protector, has dark history. Um, all of these elements, every single one of them, every single thing about Natsume that I can think of that we know about him that has been given to us in the previous season is given to us again in this episode, either as re-exposition or just reinforcement. And none of it feels like, oh, I already know this. That's pretty cool. The reason that I'm spending so much time on this particular point is because it's actually exceptional. Uh, more than just, oh, that's cool, that's good. This is exceptional. Uh... It's pretty common for a first episode of an anime to be darn good at expositing things, introducing characters, all that jazz. It's very rare for any later episode, whether it's a new season or what, to be as good at expositing things. There's almost always missing pieces. There's almost always a feeling like you couldn't pick this up at this point. I think you could pick up Natsume Yujincho at this point. Kind of. Not really, but kind of. There are elements that aren't here that, like, okay, you don't really understand the Madara part of things, but you'd pick it up pretty fast. Most of that stuff is re-exposited and or reinforced. So let's go through and figure out how. Boom. Number one. Natsume is separate from his peers in some some way. While they're all playing sports, he's reading a book. He seems quite content doing so. This isn't to say that that he's, like, on the outs and everybody hates him and he's, like, crying in a corner or something, but... He's not quite with everyone, right? And this is similar to the situation last time. He was running through the woods and ran into some other people, and that's it, right? When we first met him. Um, there's also instantly quality animation going on here. Uh, I think when these two characters start running... 
Rip, never mind. It doesn't really matter because the good animation starts right here, baby. Some of it's 24, some of it's on twos. It's all really cool. It's much spookier, much more dynamic with the, the moving down the, the thing. It's a different kind of shot than the... Usually we shoot it from above by about 6 to, to 14 feet equivalent and then over to the right by the same. So we're at like a like a 45 degree angle in two directions, shooting from the right with the character running this way. Like that's how we always do that shot of the, the, the yokai chasing Natsume. That's how we have always done it. This one's different. It's just straight at the camera. It's cool. It's different. It's more. I like it. Neat. And then rope and then stuff. Something happened before. Give me the book of friends. Oh, there are yokai who want the book of friends. That's cool. There's Nyanko sensei. Who's he? Oh, he gets into predicaments with yokai all the time. Uh, Nyanko's snarky. We already talked about parts of this section, but we're gonna go through them again because they're relevant. Nyanko's real snarky and willing to fuck with Natsume whenever he wants. Natsume's actually really strong. Cool. Uh, doesn't like being called a stupid cat. Temporary form, more powerful than he lets on. Chi-chi-chi. Why is Madara here? Oh. Also... Uh, this is another character element. Madara's like a tsundere grandpa type. Well, not really. He's a, he's a tsundere bodyguard. <laughs> there we go. Uh, who is like, I'm not really here for any reason other than my own ulterior motives. I totally don't care about Natsume or anything. But then other characters are like, okay, well, eat him and take the book. And he's like, eh, I'll let it go for a few years. Let it, you know, see how it goes. It's not a long time to wait. He's a petty human. He'll die. Okay. I do have some things to talk. I might. Oh, now now I have a question. Do I continue on the thread, which I am which I am trying to elaborate upon, which is that there's crazy cool exposition going on and writing in this episode, or do I jump to the OP to talk about something that I have like a mild theory about? Uh, let's just continue on the thread. I don't know if I'll be able to pick it up again if we don't. So let's just continue skimming through. Uh, I'll eat you like a piece of meat, rar. Uh, there will be a stolen book. Important. No family. Going from one relative to the other. Boom. Exposition about Natsume. There will be more on that that makes it more poignant and more clear. But, okay. Uh, also, I guess, you know, Togo and, and fam are cool, and Natsume feels very, very grateful for this location. He comes in. They care about Nyanko. Uh, Cheryl will come back when he's hungry. Just this moment where she puts the bowl in front of him, and he just we just we just hold on him expressing gratitude for a minute longer than we maybe have to. I think that's important. That's really important because it tells us that immediately after expressing that this is a character who's gone through multiple families, this feels like family. And that's important. Awesome. All of this is reintroduction of information and reinforcement of information. I really like this shot. Uh, I knew exactly what was going on with it as soon as we showed it uh, because there's a window there. It's just, it's like you don't frame this this way unless something appears in that window and something appears in that window. Boom. What's going to appear in the window? Oh, there it is. <laughs> so proud of myself for that one. Uh, patting myself on the head. What the fuck am I doing? Okay. It's cat. It's not Nyanko. And then Nyanko is here. Some goofy times, some cute things, and then he takes the Book of Friends. Oh no. So, why does Natsume care? Nyanko has just expressed to him, like, ah, oh, it's gonna be impossible to find him. He's dark, it's night, we should go home. No, let me keep looking just a little longer. I was entrusted with a duty. To protect the yokai's precious names. They are of great importance to me. And I believe that I must protect them. Oh, it's like a core character motivation or something. Hmm. And Madara might be snarky, he might be a dickhead, but he can be useful and he can have his head on his shoulders straight, you know? So he comes up with a good idea. Boom, there's a procession. Wonder what's going on. Oh shit, we're human. There is difference. There are dividing lines between humans and yokai. They don't get along. He'll be eaten. <laughs> there is danger. There is extreme danger here. And then this is fun. Uh, we haven't done a lot of 
Madara being funny as his big Madara form, and I like it. It's got a little bit more goofy contrast to it than Yanko form, so that's cool. Let it go, moving along, and the Lord. So we find out this is just the the actual plot of this particular episode. I think it's a good one. It's fine, um, but there it is. the The Lord was a person. Uh, nothing comes from getting, nothing good comes from getting involved with those damn humans. Ha! Huh, all right, so there is more of a dividing line between them. Cool. Good to know. Boom. Hello. And, uh, boom. Wait a second. You are Natsume, but you're not the right Natsume. What's going on, Benio? I like Benio. Uh, I hope she's back as a character more. Yeah, big-headed fat cat. Okay. Could you take us there? You do not want to do that. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Are, are you stupid? You'll be eaten. Yeah, I know. Please, let me do it. Natsume does not hesitate. Natsume has a reason. Natsume must protect. Natsume is driven by a duty. It's more important than himself. The potential suffering of others is, is more important to Natsume than the almost certain like loss of his own life. Always. Without question. You really are similar to Reiko with those brazen eyes of yours. <laughs> this is the point where characters, yokai who have known Reiko, say, oh, you're just like her, before they realize that he is anything but, because he's not like her. But we don't know how exactly, but we'll figure it out. Very well. And part of it is that he is driven by this duty. Part of it is that he has trust in her and in the others that he can figure this out and that they will respond in a good way rumor book friends okay boom hey remember when we told you that natsume had problems with previous families here's him overhearing through a door that this family wants desperately to get rid of him because he's fucking annoying to them and oh god it's him here have this book we were so we're so glad to see you have this weird-ass book that we don't care about. Throw it away. Nothing good will come of it. It's just the most important thing you'll ever experience in your life. Here, have your weird grandmother's weird book. You weird kid. Get out of my house. There's a somber expression on Reiko's face in this that we haven't really seen on her before, which is neat. We exposit about Reiko and who she is and what everything is, and that's important as well. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, shakalaka. Bang, bang, bang. Into the party we go. Hey, these are some random people. They're cool. They smell like humans, but they're not. I promise, they're not. Tell us more about the Lord. Okay. The Lord is an individual who was a yokai and was saved by a human and has good feelings toward humans and set up all this shit for us to be cool and then got trapped by humans because he fucked up. This guy is nice and intimidating. I like him as a character. He's cool. Uh, of course, he's the, the antagonistic force. He's like, we need to go fight. Which is a perfect uh, perfect opposite for Natsume in this episode. Attack? Let's not do that. And, of course, we figure out that the black cat is clearly the guy. Okay. I can't stop this many so easily. Stop doing things that are stupid. Don't, don't, don't hurt us all, Natsume. A human can't do anything. You're useless. And then we get a scene where his mask blows. You're right. Fortunately, though, I can hear you. <laughs> this is another cool element here. Natsume is shown to be spiritually strong, capable of beating down other spirits if he needs to, right? He does it at the beginning of this episode. He does not do that if he doesn't have to. And... The main power that Natsume expresses and has is that he can listen. That's it. I think that's a pretty crucial moment or like thing there or element of this character that his primary superpower that he uses to save people is listening. I think that's an important message and one we could all take to heart a little bit more. Listen. Because other people, regardless of what dividing lines you think divide you, right? Whatever makes them different from you, whether they're of a different gender or sexuality or race or political orientation or what. If you listen to them, you're going to have a better time. 
communicate with people. And the other thing is that presenting Natsume as this character who can listen across a genuine dividing line, right? Yokai and humans are genuinely different. They are. It's inevitable, right? The fact that Natsume is the one person special who can make that difference is so much more poignant because when it reflects upon our real world, the reality is that all of us have that superpower and very few of us actually use it for anything. Every bigot and a racist has the power to listen to somebody who they think they hate and find out that they don't. Every single one. So it's an important lesson, and I think a really powerful one. But we move along. I can hear you. Everyone else here, too. And the wind blows, even humans. And it lifts up his mask for just a moment. They all may be a source of strength for me. This is important because Benio expressed, like, you have that same brazen quality in your eyes, and now she sees his eyes again and realizes it's, it's very different. Maybe driven in a similar way, but very different. There's also a, a, an element of self-reflection here that maybe is what the, the ED is expressing. Natsume doesn't really, ha hasn't done this before. Um... I can hear everyone, even humans. They all may be a source of strength for me. This is a, a rhetorical question to himself. Maybe they're all a source of strength for me. Maybe I should think about that. Maybe I could tap into that and use it. This is not to me reflecting on himself and his own abilities, right? This is unique and a turning point for the character that I didn't pick up on on first viewing. That's important. Okay, cool. You're different from Reiko. Boom. Important. There he is, and off we go. Uh, more stuff. This is the Madara portion. I'm only interested in the Book of Friends. Sure you are. Then just eat him. And we get this moment. It's over so fast. I'm really interested in this line. I'm really interested in this line because of a scene in the OP. We need to talk about this. Um, so fast, it's scary. Timestamp is 1510. We'll be coming back to this in a little bit because uh, we need to. But for now, let's continue on our on our, our push through. Got him, Sensei. Yay, we did it. He's compliant. Uh, da, 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 da. Maybe it was on purpose. Maybe we should think that this cat is not malicious and is actually trying to get some point across to us. Let's figure it out. We do some very convenient searchy thing. Hey, he feels like the Lord. I wonder if we could find his name. Let's try. Gotta break the seal. How can we do that? Because he dueled and we don't know his name. So what can we do? This is also teaching us the mechanics of name returning via the book, which is important. And we are interrupted by the threat. The threat is here. Uh, we gotta put Natsume in the situation where it's life or death. And immediately, this glowing-eyed, gigantic, bearded, fierce-looking, red-skinned, clawed, oni monster thing is like, you're a human, nom 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 nom, tasty snacks. And he's like, hey, uh, we can work together. Do you know the Lord's name? I believe in you. I think that we can work through this, and we don't have to hurt each other. Again, that faith in people, right? That faith in humanity, or in personhood and in sentient entities is there so the flood comes in madara can't stop them boom 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 and natsume comes to the conclusion that in his very last seconds of life as these yokai are reaching out to grasp and claw and tear and destroy him maybe somebody maybe just maybe somebody will call out for what they really care about which is the name of their lord and they do and so we win sort of Boom. Madara transforms, pushes everybody else off, which is awesome. The actual animation for the we're going to release the name thing has been improved. It's really nice looking. This whole thing is gorgeous as it was before. I mean, it's just beautiful. The boom, 
fade out into Natsume, this push in focus right onto the eye. Uh, the sound on the clap was really crispy, I remember. Yeah, because there's that build to it and then it goes to silent with just the reverb. Yeah. Oh, that's that shit. And the actual animated cut for it is beautiful and obviously redone. Super fluid, flowy with the hair and the cloth and the whoosh. And then the return to his eyes in 24. And the brightness, the face. Whoosh. And then the actual, like, I don't know, cleansing is what I would consider it. Because it's kind of like a, it's kind of like the equivalent of a reusably animated uh, cleansing attack from Maho Shoujo, right? In, in very much the same way. Like, oh, there's a monster. We have to hit it with our superpowers. Do a thing, say a chant, and use the reusable animation. Pew, 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 pew. Thank you for releasing my spirit. You have done a great deed for the spirit world today. Ah. Like, that's, that's Maho Shoujo in a, in a nutshell. So it's, it's a, the, kind of the equivalent of that. The ending portion of it is far more than it used to be with the whole whoosh, wah. And it's also meant to be a reinforcement, like, hey, Natsume, you're on the right path. You're doing the right thing. This is a good, good idea. Uh, there, there is definitely a, oh shit, it, it's an Ikemen angel boy, uh, element here of like, whoo, okay. That's just cool. And then there's that. Ugh. Uh. <laughs> and the embrace and stuff. Now, one really cool thing that we do about this embrace is that we've got them positioned left and right, and this character is like a, a a uh, diva or a planetar and then he's like a large angelic character um you know just the, the scale of him is larger his head is like this big around when not maze is like my size head and his is like this big he's 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 a big dude um this is pretty cool because we reversed this shot later uh to match fade it from from this character himself being talked to by the hunter or by the 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 trapper that helped him. I think that's really cool. Because it, it it's uh, an expression of like karmic cycle, which is incredibly important to this episode in particular and to the whole of Natsume. Things come around, things last, things reverberate, actions reverberate and have meaning and importance. Okay, so we tap foreheads and show memories, show existence to him, being caught in the trap, being nursed back to health by this hunter and kind of taken in and being a homie, you know? And buying a manju, which is, you know, something. We don't ever see a Reiko portion to this, and we don't need to. What we do see is this. So as he, as the, the child form of Ryo closes his eyes and accepts this reaching out and pleasantness from a human we match fade that to Natsume's face, so it is the same feeling being given to Natsume by a yokai. It goes there and comes back around. It's important. Kindness returns, right? But it's more than that, because, because the hunter saved the child from the trap, the child yokai from the trap. The child yokai grew up and tried to help humans tried to be better to humans and then was trapped by humans again right and then Natsume goes and saves him from the trap but the feeling that we get is that this character the older one the more knowledgeable one is the one who's like really saved by it like the human who helps him is the one who's really saved by it and Ryo is the one who's really saved by it right but there's also like this passing along of that. Oh, this is so good. All right, I'm going to stop because I, I can't, but it's it, this is really good. Brought you here to do something about it. Forgive me. I like humans. I 
so I won't bother them again. Farewell. Not a chance. We'll meet when this instant passes. Wow. There are very few episode ones of any show that that explain their characters and world and environment and premise and and motivations and like deep levels of understanding of who these people are and how they're going to interact. Very few episode ones. I cannot think of a single second season episode one that comes even close. That's uh, what <laughs> this is amazing. All right. I've been putting it off. Let's. Let's go to the OP and go through it. Let's let's go through this OP. Shall we? I'm gonna need to mute it because there's I just can't oh put it on YouTube, you know? Boom. Uh I do really like the song though. It's immediately I like the song more. And the OP itself has a lot more going on in it. A lot less like Natsume standing against a moving sky. It's just a groovier OP, I think. It's it's nice. I like it a lot because of that. Okay. Boom. 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 Natori. Still don't know what's going on with that. Mm, we don't know. I think that's supposed to be Reiko, but I don't know. This looks like a different location. I'm not sure if it's meant to be a different location. This just doesn't look like the same place where we've been. Uh, I like this frame because it's not apparent to me that this is a CG layer, but then it becomes apparent when we move it. Uh, there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, I also really like this sequence. This reminds me quite a bit of Chi Uh in some ways with the like slow walk forward um, and the characters appearing and disappearing is really nice. There's just good stuff going on and immediately some impressive animation. Like this is all in, in 24 or close. No, it's it's all in, on twos. Um, but it's it's gorgeous as a cut of character animation. There's a lot to it. And there's a lot more of that. Um, and a lot more just expressiveness with the camera in this whole thing with the characters moving by and showing them all and, and cool stuff. And then there's this. One of those hands is Reiko's. Whose hand is the other hand? One of these hands is Reiko's. Whose hand is the other hand? One of these hands is Reiko's. Whose hand is the other hand? I have a theory. Maybe. 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 So Reiko fades into Natsume. Boom. Bam. She's not releasing. He is releasing. Okay. Blow. Gone. Madara, like a lightning bolt in the same direction. There's an implication to that. Like a continuation of motion. As though... Natsume blowing this direction blows Madara forward and free. Because it's exactly the same direction. Same scenes, but with yokai in them. Procession, some stuff, some stuff. I, I, that might not be Reiko. What if it's not Reiko? What if that's a new character? That would be interesting. And then there's a, a really solid turning cut. Boom. Yeah, it's nice and solid. And then it ends. Okay. One of those hands is Reiko's. Whose is the other hand? I don't want to be weird about this, man. I don't want to be weird about this. I can only think of one theory. I can only think of one, and it's Madara. I don't know how. I don't know why that would make sense. I, I, it doesn't make sense, and yet... Wait a second, it kind of does, doesn't it? Why does Madara care about Natsume?
But what if he cared about Reiko? I mean, cared. I mean, really cared. Okay, 1510. I think we need to hear it. <laughs> there are two statements there. One of them... One of them on its own doesn't really imply anything, right? A human's life passes in an instant. That doesn't really... There's no judgment to that. But there are a couple things. One, he'll be away to pass time. A human's life passes by in an instant. Not a lot of time being passed. Not a lot of value being gained. It's like it's fake. It's like it's a justification that maybe Nyanko doesn't actually believe, but uses because it's useful for other yokai to maybe understand quickly. But then there's the second line. So fast that it's scary. That's got a value judgment to it. An emotion attached to it. Why does Nyanko care about the passing of human life? Why would that scare him? He doesn't care about humans. Does he? Does he? He always says he doesn't. Why would he lie? Why would it be scary? And, and beyond that, the way that Nyanko says all of these lines. There's a feeling of like experience that comes with it. It's the same kind of thing as like. There's a weight to the words of compassion said at a funeral from someone who has recently lost someone themselves. Right? Like someone who has a wound like that that's kind of fresh, kind of knows. There's this feeling of familiarity with that feeling from Nyanko, which isn't something that we would expect from Nyanko. So why is it there? What if Madara is playing the role of bodyguard to Natsume? Staying around, staying nearby. Not really trying to influence him too much, but making sure he's alright. Because there's a deeper connection between them. A really deep connection. A connection on the level of, like, he and Reiko worked together and fell apart because she's mortal. I don't know. This is very conjectury. There's very little to go off of on this. But that scene in the OP with the two hands is weird. It implies romance in a story without it so far. And it's superimposed over Reiko. So, it means it has, uh, like, there's some connection that Reiko has to somebody else that has repercussions that travel to the present. And they fell apart, and that's important. And Yanko repeatedly in this episode talks about, like, the mortality of humans, and does so in a way that kind of implies that he's not wanting Natsume to die and that he's maybe experienced something similar to Natsume dying before and thus doesn't want it. Okay. Okay. I don't know if it's anything, but I feel like there's something here. And I might be I might be picking up on like the wrong parts of it and something you know, I, I'm thinking a romantic path when it was anything but, and they were partners in let's take over the world via yokai or something. Who knows? But I got, I got this suspicion. I got this suspicion in my skull brain, 
and I'm suspicious. Okay. That's all. That's all on that. That's all I wanted to say on that. Uh, bring it up here. If it comes if it comes to anything later, then we can pat ourselves on the back and be like, hey, we picked up on this in the beginning. And if it doesn't, we can smack ourselves in the face and go, gosh, we're such an idiot. Okay, overall thoughts. For a reintroduction to characters, re-exposition of, of plot points, and still an exciting and fun little mini-story itself... I give this episode a 10 out of 10. Solidly. A solid 10 out of 10. Like, not as a Natsume Yujincho episode, just as an anime episode. And not because it's got crazy Sakaga, or because it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, or because it's perfect, but it's pretty damn close. Um, there aren't flaws in it, and so that's really cool. It's also taken us like an hour and a half to discuss this one episode, so that's where we're leaving off for the day. I wonder if the episode 2 is actually finished downloading. Oh, it actually has. So I could go and watch it, but we're an hour and a half in, so we're not going to. Sorry. Okay, we're going to wrap here. I've said a lot about this episode. I think that it's really good. I think there are some really intriguing elements to it. I think it tells a solid, concise, coherent, single story, while also managing to reintroduce the entirety of the world of Natsume Uchincho in a way that very few shows come out anywhere near doing even in their very first episodes let alone their second season first episodes excellent all around good stuff good job Natsume good job Brainspace staff you nailed it we're gonna call it a quits there I've been Tiabu. this has been Natsume Yujin Cho season two or Zoku Natsume I hope you've enjoyed it uh, episode one I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have and I hope to catch you next week likely for episodes two and three and we'll move from there into the rest of the season cool cool Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Peace. Perfect. You Atashi o tada no yojin tanda no da. Sensei wa yojinbo daro? Datta ra. So, Nyako said say literally just mm mm mm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, uh, the reason that I really paused, I mean, that was a good excuse too, and the fact that we cut to a nice, a nice dark scene that's very different, which will make it easier for me in post, uh, but the reason that I cut is because there's so much, obviously, going on here immediately. The first thing that's, that's probably pretty obvious is that the animation on that yokai is dope. I mean dope. And the reason is because, like, there's detail to it. That's that's the main thing that I would say. A lot of the yokai in in season one are basically formless blobby things because that's easier. We don't have to do a lot of detail, a lot of clothing, a lot of specific moving objects and stuff. This we go hard in the other direction. Uh, she is creepy and she's got her neck is moving and it's almost all in like 24 FPS and it's super smooth and spooky and ominous and horrifying and great. It's it's just great. It's lovely. She looks really good. The whole the whole chase that we get looks really good. All that's all that is nice. I mean it's it's just it's nice. Let me see, where's that wiggledy wobbledy one? Yeah, the the first cut. Ugh. Ugh. I don't like it, but I do like it. I, I don't know what this rope is or what There were the eyes too, right? Wait, where was that? Okay, I guess it's just Nyanko waking up. And then being goofy and stuff. Uh, but then the other thing that, that really stands out to me is the rapidity of exposition here. Um, when you start a second season of a show, you kind of got to re-exposit things because it's been a year at least since people saw the first season. They're like, Natsume, that's about like monsters or something. If they haven't watched it recently, right? So you need to re-exposit everything, and you need to do it concisely because you don't want to waste too much time on it. Partly because it's probably not written in the manga to re-exposit all these things. These are possibly anime original scenes, right? Unless there's an actual volume transition and, like, the mangaka is doing the same thing. So, what do we get? Well, 
Natsume. He's separate from everybody. He's focusing on reading a book. He gets knocked into somebody else's yard, reaches out for a ball. Oh shit, there's a yokai here. He can see yokai. Cool. Who's Natsume-sama? He has the book of friends. Give it to me, give it to me. He's chased by, by yokai to get the book of friends. Great. We know a lot now. That's a lot of information. Don't know what this is. Something like this happened before. Meet Nyanko. Hello, Nyanko. Hi. Got yourself into a predicament with Yokai again? Oh yeah, he does this all the time. That's right. Uh, Nyanko's kind of snarky. Cool, we needed to know that. Sensei, it hurts. He's a sensei. Oh, but he's a douche. Okay. And bonk bonk, Natsume's actually really strong. That's cool. What do you mean, you stupid cat? I'm not a cat. I'm a super powerful monster, and you will treat me with respect, but you won't. Just a temporary form. This is all exposition. Bodyguard. Exposition. <laughs> Why is he his bodyguard? Ch -ch -ch. He's still snarky. Okay. I'm waiting for your life to end so that I can get the book of friends. Here's my character motivation. <laughs> Bingo bongo. <laughs> and insults. It's like everything is just like right there. Boom. Pa, pow. Natsume. He's a boy. He's separate from all the other kids. He's still friends with them, but he's a little bit separate. He sees Yokai. Yokai chase him. They want the book of friends back. He has this bodyguard named Nyanko. Nyanko is a lucky cat, but he's not really a lucky cat, and he gets really pissed when people think of him as just a stupid cat. And Nyanko is waiting for him to die so that he can get the book of friends back. That is the entire premise of Natsume Yuchincho. You could... You could hardly put it into a one-paragraph synopsis and make it more concise. You could hardly do that. This is deftly put together, and I really appreciate it. Because exposition is a necessary evil sometimes. Like, we as people going into second season of Natsume know all of these things. So, when these things are re-presented to us, how are we going to feel about them? Are we going to feel like, oh god, we know all of this already? Are we going to feel like, yep, 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 all right, get to the good stuff? Because we want the latter more than the former. We don't want to feel annoyed by the re-exposition because it is a necessary evil. It needs to be there for people who've had more time. It's necessary. But, but, if it irks the people who don't need it, then it's not doing its job. So this is just a perfect happy medium, and it's really, really well done. And it's one of those things that doesn't get, uh, I don't know, I, I guess enough attention. Thinking about the way that your characters and your show exposits itself is important. And bad exposition is one of the hallmarks of mediocre writing. And this is good. That's it. Cool. Let's go. Was that a mistake? Or is it a goof? Is it a goof or a gaff? <laughs> because I can imagine colorless Nyanko is an expression of shock. But I would expect similar stylistic choice for Natsume. Or something else to indicate in frame that that's intentional. They, they couldn't have just forgotten the character design. No, because he's got, he's got marks on his, on his cheeks. He's got the marks on his head. No, no, no. This is intentional. It's gotta be. So there's there's probably a manga panel like this with just a blanked out a blanked out Nyanko. 